Yard curves depend on those three conditions. How intermittent is it for the output break to occur? And also how long that for your case. So depending on how long will it take, you can have what? Several cases because it's, it's, it's spreading from air to air. And also depending on how many people are exposed, then you can have what? You can have larger, uh, longer curves compared to when few people are exposed. So again, these intervals are, are not different, are not the same because it's totally irregular because the intermittency really can, cannot be explained. So you cannot explain this one because it depends on the duration of exposure and also the number of people that are exposed. So as a result, you see what we call irregularly jagged curves, which depend on the uh, intermittency and also uh, duration of exposure and also the number of individuals that are exposed. The last type of curve is what we call propagated epidemic. The propagated epidemic is what means person to person, what involves person to person uh, uh, mode of transmission. So in this case, you have what? Multiple waves of waves of uh, infection. So as a result, you have what? You have several peaks or multiple waves uh, of uh, curves. And these are what? These are regularly, regularly placed compared to the uh, uh, intermittent exposure. These are uh, in evenly, evenly placed because each curve, I mean, each wave of this uh, curve gives rise what, to the disease, and the outcome. So this first curve is the source of infection for this. This is the source of infection for this, and this is the source of infection for that population. So as a result, what is what you the peaks are but the peaks increase in intensity because this is relatively small, they give rise right to the this one, this one give rise right to the other, and that one give rise right to the other. So cases in one peak may be sources for a sub subsequent peak. So as a result, you see what? Progressively taller peaks, one incubation period apart. So you can uh, clearly calculate incubation period of the disease. If you look at the center of this outbreak and the center of this, the duration between this one and this one, and between this and this should be equal. And between this and this should be equal. So that will give you what you call an incubate, the estimate, the estimate of incubation period in, in a propagated epidemic. I have a question. Yeah. Why is the gap, we see more gap in between from <coughs> one case to other case to other case? We, Cases are increasing, but we, why we, there is a big gap in between? This one? Yes. No, this is, this, here you only see one one small curve. Okay. Here you have several uh, curves. So this is depend because probably this is just uh, one person, you know, there is a new in the area. Mm -hmm. This probably got it from main source or from what we call uh, probably from uh, animals or from you know, people coming from other areas. So this person now infects other people, is exposed to the other people, then these people got infection from this. So this between time is the incubation period? This is at the center of this one okay. incubation period. Then these people now that are a large in number compared to this, they give infection More to these infection. people. So again, we look at this one, and this is relatively, I think it's 14. So between this and this is six, between this and this is six. So the incubation period is fairly, fairly similar. So this is what we call a propagated epidemic. And, and this is, especially if the infection is transmitted from person to person, this is the type of curve that, that you see. Any question?